We're good? Sweet. What's going on guys? Zach Perna here. Um, if you're an existing subscriber, legend, welcome back. If you're new to this channel, then um, what's going on? It's good to have you. Uh, basically guys, I put up a post on Instagram the other day. I'm just gonna get straight into this video. So I put up a post on Instagram talking about fat loss myths. One thing, if you don't follow me on Instagram, now's a great chance to do so. Um, otherwise you'll be cursed with uh, a lifetime of diabetes and obesity, which like I said in the post, you can risk it if you want, but I wouldn't. So hit the follow button and while you're at it, like this video. Now, that's all the admin done. That's it. Simple guys, just get it done. Anyway, my point is that I uh, started talking about fat loss myths and a few things that I kept hearing about fat loss and all these, like I didn't think people still believe these things, but evidently I had guys messaging me saying, is this true, is that true? And I thought, you know what? I need to clear the air a little bit around um, some things that you don't need to worry about and that is just complete shit. So that's what I put in the post and it did really well. So I thought, and I'll, I better elaborate on these points and make a bit of a video about it. So I wanna start off talking about intermittent fasting. Now, I said, like I said, intermittent fasting isn't God's gift, guys, okay? So a lot of people will try to sell you intermittent fasting saying you're gonna burn more body fat or it's better for hormones or whatever it is. And the truth is, I am Iron Man. Truth is, in my opinion, it's not any better for burning body fat or building muscle, especially building muscle, than a traditional uh, meal frequency setup. The only benefit, in my opinion, of intermittent fasting is that you can eat more calories in a shorter window. For example, I use it. So I use intermittent fasting when I, my calories are low, say I'm eating 16, 1800 calories, and that over six meals is cool. So what I do is I will try skip breakfast and I'll start my meals at 12 p.m. And all that's doing is allowing me to combine breakfast and lunch, essentially. And it just feels like you're not dieting as much. If, if you're eating on the hour, uh, 1800 calories, it's gonna feel like no food, it's gonna suck. So the whole point of fasting for me is purely to survive the morning without food, so you're fine, then you get more food in a smaller window. It's not because of fat loss benefits, I really don't think there are any. Um, to elaborate on my point even further, I actually contacted a survival expert to talk about fasting. So here's the call. Hello. Hello. Hey, Barrett, Zach, how's it going? If I'm honest, not too great, Zach. Literally haven't eaten anything in about 18 hours now. Oh, is that because you're intermittent fasting or? No, it's because there's literally no sign of food anywhere. So you don't think that fasting burns more body fat? Not really. Actually, there's an old story of a man in the Sahara Desert that went a whole three weeks without eating. And? What do you mean, and? He's so dead. Turns out the body actually needs food to survive. And anyone who tells you otherwise is a lying scumbag trying to take your money. Well, there you have it. Now, my next point is faster cardio. So people still think faster cardio burns uh, more body fat than traditional fed cardio, or just it cardio any time of the day. Um, fasted obviously meaning with no food in. So years ago when I started, like when I was doing my comp prep and when I was dieting for my show, faster cardio was like essential. I was like a must, I've got to do it, it's, got to, it's burning more fat. Um, I didn't care what anyone said, I thought it was burning more fat. Um, now looking at the research, looking at just, and how I'm performing anyway, it, it's just not the case. I mean, to put it simply, whether you do your cardio fast in the morning or at night after you've had a whole day of food, it doesn't matter. Where the uh, confusion comes from is if you do cardio in the morning, fasted, you're gonna burn more body fat because your glycogen is more likely to be depleted and so you're gonna tap into body fat as energy because you don't have any food coming in. Makes sense, right? But later in the day when you're eating your calories, you're gonna burn less body fat and you're gonna be burning more from the food that you're eating. Vice versa, if you wake up, eat a meal, do some cardio, you're probably gonna burn a lot of the energy that you just consumed, right? But later in the day, you're gonna be burning more body fat. You see what I mean? So provided you're not increasing or decreasing calories, if you do 60 minutes of cardio in the morning versus 60 minutes at night, it doesn't matter. It's a zero sum game. It doesn't matter which order you do it in. If you, if you feel better doing it fed, then fine. I personally like morning cardio fasted but not for the benefits of fat loss. I like it um, because I feel like it's a good start to the day. I am more energized in the morning, especially in the dieting phase. I get out of bed and I have the energy to do cardio. And then later, training is easy because for me, I love training. So it's not a chore to get to the gym, but I know for some people, if training is difficult and they, it's a chore to get there, then knock it out in the morning, 100%. You, you'll perform better as well. Um, but for me, I know that when I'm like 
When calories are getting low and I'm really struggling with motivation, I need to do my cardio first thing in the morning. So people would often ask me, are you doing that for fat loss, fasted? And it's like, well, no, I'm doing it for efficiency, convenience, um, and it's a good start to the day as well. It's kind of like a, a mental state. So that's why I like to do fasted cardio, um, not for any advantageous fat burning effects. Oh, this is a good one. So this, I thought died. I thought this myth died, uh, but I heard it again. So this myth like lives in people who know nothing about training, nutrition or anything. And they just go, hey, didn't, uh, isn't it true that if you don't eat enough, your body will go into starvation mode and you'll actually put on body fat? And it's like, <laughs> no, <laughs> because where this came from, let me just say where it came from first, bit of context. When you're dieting and you're decreasing calories, if your calories get low enough after a long period of time, which they will on a diet, what happens is, is your body adapts. It's called adaptive thermogenesis. All it means is that your body slowly becomes more efficient at using calories. Your BMR goes down a little bit and you start moving less. And basically your body's trying to conserve as much energy as possible, okay? That's the slowing of the metabolism, right? So you're burning less calories, whether it's intentional or unintentional. Now, people took this and thought, okay, so that means there's this thing called starvation mode where you're not eating enough so that you're not burning enough. And then people took that and went, so you can gain fat. So what you need to do to burn more fat is put more food in. And it's like, no. Look at people in like third world countries that actually are starving. They are not putting on body fat. They are dying of starvation. So the, the sheer premise of not eating enough, therefore you need to eat more to burn more body fat, makes no sense. For example, tell me this situation makes sense. So as a bit of an update, um, dieting has been going well. So far I'm at about 1600 calories. So um, everything seems to be getting Did pretty Did you say 1600 calories? Dude, that's like starvation mode, bro. Like you, you're gonna get fat as fuck eating that little. Isn't it just about creating like an energy deficit though? <laughs> energy, no, no. Here, listen to me, here's what we're gonna do. Uh, could I get a large double quarter pounder with four extra patties, please? And? I feel leaner already. Told you. So I think the only bit of truth to this that can help is people might notice when they increase calories, they might boost their NEAT, which is a non-exercise activity thermogenesis. Just, did I say non-exercise? <laughs> it's their non-exercise activity induced thermogenesis, which means uh, it's the calories they burn unintentionally walking around, doing like housework, whatever. Just the things, like even me doing this right now with my hands. If I was dieting right now, like really bad, I would just be like, I'd be sitting down, I'd be not moving. That's called a reduction in need. But because I've got enough food in the system, I'm moving around a little bit more. You add that up over the course of the day, you'll burn hundreds of more calories, which is pretty crazy. So what people find is that when they increase their food intake, Oftentimes, they're just increasing their expenditure by a lot more relative to their increase in food. So for example, if, I, if I'm struggling on really low calories and I feel like I'm plateauing because I'm moving, I'm dead, I'm like not moving at all, right? So say I'm pl plateauing at 1500 calories. Maybe I add 200 calories of pure carbs back in the system. All of a sudden, my training goes through the roof, I'm moving more, and I'm burning an extra 300, let's say. Then I'd think, hey, this increase in food, I'm burning more fat because I'm not in starvation. Not a thing. It's just not how it works. It's more the, the odd chance that I've increased my expenditure by a higher amount. So that's, that's kind of it, guys. So to sum that one up, um, you can eat as little as possible and you will lose weight. If you are, like, please don't do this, please, because you'll die. But if you eat like 300 calories a day, guess what? Dead. Your body's going to lose a lot of weight. You're going to lose a lot of fat. You're going to lose a lot of muscle. So it's just, a th you know, your body doesn't conserve onto energy out of nowhere. Okay. You're going to lose it, but that's an extreme obviously. So I'm not telling you to do that, but I'm just saying that if you eat nothing, you will lose weight. This whole theory of starvation mode, not a thing. Catcher. Now this one's bound to ruffle a few feathers. This one is um, the old excuse of, I have a slow metabolism. I just have a sluggish metabolism. And the problem is, I mean, take it from me, because I am a fiend of, of like cutting on low calories. I would say my metabolism is slow, okay? But let's, let's look at some figures here. I'm 5'7", and I'm a lean 75 kilos. So overall, that's not a lot of body weight to have. <laughs> to have. So I don't necessarily need a lot of calories anyway, okay? But still, I don't have an active job. I train once to twice a day, so maybe cardio a little bit and weight training. Um, but I'm not on my feet all day. I technically have an office job. So I'm quite sedentary. Now, look at that. I'm, I'm not very heavy. I live quite a sedentary life and I don't have like an active job. So obviously my metabolism, I don't need a stupid amount of calories. Now that's why I can cut on 16, 1800 and it's not the end of the world for me. Some people 
like my brother Joel, he's a he's a tradie, so he is out there. Like the shit that he does looks like hell. So well played, Joel, for doing it because I couldn't do it. But literally, it's physical work. And you guys, if you're tradies as well, you'll know that it's insane. And you need a lot of food to get through your day and not die. So if you have a very active job, you are your calorie needs are they're high and they're very demanding. Whereas for me. I don't really need it. So generally what it is, is an overestimation in how much they're burning. So it's like me saying, yeah, but I train once a day, so that means I should be, I, should, I deserve 4,000 calories. It's an overestimation in the activity and it's also an underestimation in how much they're eating. So if you get a lot of people and ask them, hey, do you track your calories? They go, yeah, sure do. They'll track what they wanna track and they won't track the little snacks, the oils, the toppings, the sauces, whatever it is. I know for me, if I'm like, in a bit of a snacky mood and I'll go in the pantry multiple times per day, like probably like 10, might grab a little bit of peanut butter here. Oh, do we have any chocolate? Break a couple pieces off. Oh yeah, that muesli is pretty good. I'll just have one now. Might have a couple M&Ms. You do that enough throughout the day, add it up guys. And I, I just challenge you like, see what your calories are and then actually add up the snacks, the extras, the stuff you don't measure that you just think doesn't count. I've been there, every time I like snack on something, I'm like, I feel good snacking on it because I'm not writing it down and I'm not counting it. I'm thinking like, I don't worry about it. But it's like a 300 calorie like mismatch that you're not even including. So for you thinking you're dieting on 1800, add up your oils, add up your even your vegetables, your snacks, and you've got an extra like 600. So then it's not so shocking. Um, and then you probably don't have a sluggish metabolism. Some people might, it could be a genetic thing where you, you actually do have a, a slower metabolism. You need less calories than someone else. Um, a way to get out of that is to have a maintenance phase. I mean, this can happen after a dieting period. So you can have a maintenance phase, slowly increase from there and try to build up that metabolism again. But really guys, most people, it's just a case of how much you're moving really in a day. How hard are you training? And are you accurately tracking? Now that's kind of like all I have for you guys today. But if there are any kind of things you want me to cover on fat loss or muscle gain, any myths or things you're not really sure about, just drop in the comments. Okay, and I'll get a few together, make another video because I like doing this stuff. It's kind of like, I really want to clear the air on a lot of the bullshit that you guys might see online. And um, it just doesn't need to be like that. So um, that, I get, that is it for me guys. Don't forget if you want to join my coaching program as well, massivefem.com in the description. Like this video, if you're still watching it, subscribe to the channel, because why not? And um, I guess that is it. So you guys definitely know what to do. Stay massive.